What's up, everyone? We'll give it a few minutes before we start. Let people get into this live. You know, we do go to our 70s jam all the time. Say what's up to Anthony. Put put uh, AJ in the comments. Send me, put some AJs in the comments. people in this building. <laughs> it's become my favorite jam, I don't know why. So. You're aping me up a little bit. <laughs> Hard not to, it's not hard not to catch on to what you're doing there. You oh, 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 go, 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 go. I don't have it. I don't have it. Oh, man. All right. So I'm cut that intro music. We're supposed to have uh, some good crowd today. Um, we, a couple of people that I see is from Level Up in Tech. I see Tom in the building. What's up, Tom? So thank you guys for coming. Thank you for everyone that's that's on the call right now. Make sure you pin your people that's supposed to be on the call and, and get them over here and get them registered and come on over. But we have, I'm going to call them a tech mogul, y'all. Tech mogul anthony james somebody that i've looked up to for a long time that man has changed the landscape of edutech period how we how we learn and how we get into the industry and how we upscale has changed because of things that he has created with his bare hands he got in the mud and got dirty with it and created something that's helping change lives what's up big dog how are you man Hey, I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. I think it's uh, I think it's really cool, you know, given the fact that you, you Linux Academy, we work together. Yeah. Uh, being able to hop on and have a conversation, like uh, I haven't done that for a very long time, and then doing it with you, I'm just, I'm just honored to be able to do that. So thanks for having me. Yeah, man, it, man the pleasure is all mine, man. It's, it's, it's been incredible to get you up here and just talk to the people, even people who, um are not able to make the call, but able to see uh replay, they're going to be uh, astound to to learn more about you and learn more about your thoughts and where you think cloud is going in, in the edge tech space as well. Um, normally, I ask somebody, if you don't mind, to give the folks one interesting fact about yourself that people may not know, if you don't mind. One interesting fact. Oh, that's a, that's a good one. So an uh, interesting fact is I didn't actually major in any technology in college. I majored in finance and economics and not oh, technology. Wow. Yeah, I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to do all the math required for computer science. So instead I went into economics and just did a, a lot of other math in, instead. So, yeah. Well, do you think that made you like a, a better businessman um, in this industry? Um, you know, very potentially. So in high school, I always had this passion for both, you know, I always followed stocks and business news. And then I always would, uh, you know, I started a long time ago on a Linux and PHP tutorial blog when I was 16 called Pinehead.com. Uh, okay, yep, that's yep. Why, where we named the, the Pinehead the Penguin on Linux Academy. And, uh, it, and honestly, like having a well-rounded understanding of just how all of that works from an economic standpoint, not necessarily business standpoint, but more economics, I think it was extremely advantageous for me, yes. Nice, nice. Yeah. So, I mean, with me and I'm pretty sure a lot of other people, you know, we didn't come from a technical background as well. But with the help of a platform that you created, we were able to move in and 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 cease what we, we think is ours, our spot. 
our, our purpose in this industry. So if you don't mind, um, tell us more about what, what are you doing now to contribute to the industry and what are some things that that's on your list in the future if, if, if you can't share? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I don't know if anybody knows kind of the entire story of Linux Academy, uh, but I started it back in my basement in March of 2012, right? Mm -hmm. And we were talking a, lot, a little bit about it before the show started. Worked two jobs, was working all of these hours, right? So, you know, now, you know, and then you go and grow the company. It, it's the thing is, it's just, a, it's a lot of hours. It's a lot of work, right? So the now that I'm not in Linux Academy anymore, my approach is a little bit different. You know, I, I love helping people. Um, I want to continue providing value to others. At the end of the day, if there were so many things I had to learn the hard way while building an organization from just myself to 220 people. Um, and so now kind of what I'm doing is I'm working with several other CEOs of startup companies that are smaller, kind of where Linux Academy was when we got our Series A funding, mm. uh, about 10 to 20 people and helping them go through that transition because it's an extremely stressful transition that if you don't get it right, can really just mess you up and for a while in terms of stress and anxiety and stuff like that. So that's what I've been doing towards uh, recently is uh, working towards that. Yeah, that's that's awesome, man, because, I mean, you've been through the growing pains, you've been through the stress, you've been through the anxiety, right? So seeing people go through it now, you're able to help them navigate the, the muddy waters and uh, go around the roadblocks that you face. So that's 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 pretty awesome, man, that you're able to do that, especially helping uh, many companies be successful. So I want to get into the meat and potatoes and ask questions that people are are coming on to the call to, to check out and people who are going to watch the replay want to want to know. Right. So now we know cloud industry is exploding, especially with COVID has pushed companies to adopt cloud and go through a digital uh, transformation way sooner than they even wanted to, right? Um, this means that, and what we've seen, a lot of developing talent or new talent jumping over into this industry from other industries that they feel that they're not stable, right? So they want to look for the best opportunities, right? They care about coming from A to B. They want to get a job, right? So tell us more about, you know, um, I know you told your story about your beginnings, but what made you want to get into tech? And, and tell us more about the difference from the work ethic that you had then of what you think is required now. Well, that's, a, that's an interesting question. So what I'll do is I'll start off with uh, what happened after college, right? So after college, I got this, I got a job at this company called State Street doing fund accounting. Um, and so, you know, the thing is, is I, I'm a really creative person. I say creative. I like building something. And when it comes to accounting, um, they don't really appreciate creativity in accounting, right? Mm -hmm. Creativity is generally frowned upon. Mm -hmm. So, you know, at the end of the day, I had this, uh, you know, I had this little bit of skill set between working at a uh, web hosting provider when I was in high school and a little bit through college. Uh, and then I had this passion, you know, I ran that blog, pinhead.com. And so what I did was I said, you know what? I, I, I went into finance and economics. This isn't for me. This isn't going to work for me. So the question is, is how do you bridge the gap before going to where you see yourself going? Because there, there's so many steps along the way. I wasn't going to go get a job as a software developer out of the box because I didn't have the modern skill set as a software developer. Okay. Or when it came to Linux administration at that time. So the first thing I did was a friend of mine, and, and, and you know him, Stephen Smith, but a friend of mine was working at a church and uh, he, as the IT administrator, and I called him up on the phone and I said, hey, uh, what do you, what is, do you need any help on Linux or PHP stuff? Well, it turns out that they were running all of their website stuff. So I started volunteering, spending uh, evenings with them and, and weekends with them and kind of working on getting my experience up again. And then I started applying for drop jobs that bridged the gap of my skill set, right? Mm. Getting back into technology, I have a financial skill set. Turns out business intelligence was the bridge for me getting back into technology. So I, I just started applying for any and every programmer analyst job that I saw. And at the end of the day, it took a while, right? It was really, really discouraged. I didn't have any technical, actual professional. You know, web hosting in high school doesn't come off as professional background when I went and majored in finance economics. So at the end of the day, you know, I had to do this hustling on the nights and weekends. 
I had little side projects at home. I was just, I was just hungry. Like I, I just loved it. Right. And if you don't love something, you, you just, it's not going to work. You're not going to put in the effort. Um, and effort is efforts, the key, right? Right. Out working the other person for a job. That that's the key, you know, out working yourself. That that's the key early on. So ended up applying for this job, got the job interview, even though I messed up SQL versus SQL in the interview question on the naming thing, but got the job. And I started writing uh, forecasting uh, scripts on uh, Excel 2000 is what they, they ran. Then they oh, moved wow. me over to ClickView and I built out their ClickView architecture. Um, and then, you know, from there, I just kept learning, right? And I wanted to get into software development for web. So that's what I just kept doing at home on nights and weekends. Um, and so kind of, you know, the story, a lot, a lot being said here, the story that you notice there's years of hustle there's years of nights and weekends. It was a hobby, so it wasn't work. You know, mm. I was excited to go learn stuff, but it was really hard to learn stuff. Uh, and then I got the then I got a job. I was applying uh, because I volunteered at a church. I was able to connect with other churches in the local local area. Found out one of them was hiring a PHP software developer and Linux administrator to help build out their online campus. So I got hired for that. I actually took a pay cut to go there, by the way. So I, I took a significant pay cut from where I was to go to the church, right, to get the skill set that I wanted to have for where I wanted to be in my career, right? Because at, the, at mm. the end of the day, if you're not doing what you love, sometimes you have to go in a smaller position mm. to, be able to, to be able to grow from there, right? So I did. I went into this position, which was where I wanted to be, but it was a pay cut, right? So the cool thing is I got to start, you know, doing some PHP modifications on their current LMS system. And then a year down the road, they're like, hey, we want to build out this online campus and we're going to use AWS to do it. And they put me and another guy on it. Uh, the other guy was kind of like the video engineer and I was a software developer. So at the time, this is 2010. No right? AWS <laughs> got like five services, you know, S3, I think SQS might have been one and EC2. There was no auto sailing for how our use cases. There was no, there's a few global regions. And here we are, we were streaming to several thousand people on Sundays wow. across the world, actually, because it's the largest United, United Methodist church in the country. So I had to develop this auto scaling streaming architecture to scale up and down on these repeater nodes across the world based off of location and demand live during these services to and so it was the back-end architecture i got to work with which was just super awesome so built it up built the online campus uh and then was uh, i want to keep i want i want to keep doing it right i want to keep working with aws mm. so from there i just the project was over and i didn't get to keep working with aws so i was like how can i i want to get certified in linux how can i learn more and also do these things at once and and i just went on to kind of build linux academy from there um, and I know that was a long winded answer, but <laughs> oh, to summarize man. all of that. It's, it was an incredible amount of effort and work. And right. at the end of the day, I think it's more effort today than it was then. And the reason I say that is because software development's a little bit different, yeah. right? Uh, you know, the MVC model view controller was a lot easier than, than kind of the modern architectures with react and, and all this stuff in, in my Humble, probably wrong opinion. Um, and so, you know, it, it was just a, it's just amount of effort. And at the end of the day, effort's the key. And you can't, even when you're, even when you're not winning, right? There were so many rejections and job interview embarrassments. It wasn't like I got, you know, I went to the first business intelligence job interview and got the job. There were rejections left and right. Cause I just didn't have right. a skill set. Yeah. And, and that's, I think uh, one thing you hit on the head is, you know, you gotta, like what you're doing, right? If you don't like it, and let's say if you're just trying to come over to the industry just because, like, oh, you know, I'm trying to do something better. I want to work from home. I hear that all the time. I want to work from home. That's what I want. Brothers, what you do? Can you, can you help me? Because I'm trying to work from home. Mm. Like, you have to like what you're doing. You got to know and have a plan, at least a direction of where you want to go in this industry. And it doesn't have to be final, right? Because you can always pivot if you find out this is not what you want to do, but you got to like 
some type of aspect of technology and understand where you're trying to go. The work ethic, I think if you have a work ethic from the days when you were trying to get in or when you got in and, and carry that into now and outwork people, you, you'll be a shining star because right now is the perfect time to uh, show your work, network with people on platforms like LinkedIn and build your brand. Just not even if you're not trying to build a personal brand, just trying to show off the projects and things that you're doing is you, you have millions of people that have the eyeballs on you. So if you can show your work ethic, you're going to have companies or even employees of companies that's going to be looking at you that you didn't even know until that right time they hit you up and say, hey, we got something open and I've been watching you since such and such. Um, I think you'd be a right fit. But once again, you got to work. If you come into this industry and think that stuff is just going to happen for you, you're going to you're going to quit at the first rejection. You know, when when that job turns you down after you've been working six months certain up and because, you know, you didn't focus on any other skills building them and they start talking about other skills that you have no idea about. You got to take it as a learning opportunity and not take it as defeat or a roadblock. So um, I thank you for that story. Seriously, man, I'm pretty sure they, they appreciate it as well. Well, there's two there's two kind of real keys in there, right? It's it's what's your purpose. OK, because <laughs> at the end of the day, the amount of effort. To, to build something, to learn something new, whether it doesn't matter what you're learning, the amount of effort is the same. The amount of frustration is the same, but to, but to build it, like what's your purpose? Purpose. What's going to keep you up four hours late at night focused on it? Why are you doing it? And I think right. the purpose has to be greater than I want to work from home or I want to work, make more money. Like what, right. what's the purpose? Do you want to make more money to provide a better opportunity for your family? That's a great purpose, right? right. You know, my purpose was I loved technology. I really loved helping and interfacing with people. I wanted to combine those things together. And because of that purpose, I was able to go and felt, found Linux Academy. I wanted to help people. I wanted to use the technology. How do you combine those things together? So purpose, yeah. I think, is super important. Yeah. I mean, for me, it was more, you know, I came up and I knew about the tech industry, but understanding the the the, the career I could build for myself in the tech industry and the, the limits I can break off and do whatever I wanted to do creatively just lit a fire inside of me. And then, you know, not seeing any people that look like me in the area that I'm in or even my family uh, be successful in this industry motivated me, you know, and the, the success, the success and financial stability came with it where, you know, I'm able to change the life of my family and, and hopefully my son wants to come into tech, you know, if not, that's okay. But, you know, hopefully one of my children will be like, you know what, let's carry on this legacy and continue to build a, a tech family. But um, now speaking of a lot of people, man, I mean, like the, the thing is that's, that's a huge purpose. If you think right, about yeah. it, like inspire an entire new generation and everything else to love and have a passion for technology that can change the world. I mean, that's huge. That's awesome. It's so cool, by the way, I didn't mean to stop you, but it's so cool to see so many people on like your inspirational videos and your inspirational newsletters. I love seeing those on, on LinkedIn. Yeah. You know, um, it's just the people that really keep me going, man. Like, you know, just success stories and people who just, all you need is belief, right. And just people who just believe in themselves enough to say, Hey, you know, I'm trying to do this, man. I need help. Right. Cause some people can do it on their own. Yeah. But some people need the help because they have no direction. So having the guts enough to come out and network and say, I need help. Can you help me? That's the, that's the start in itself. That means you're willing to learn and be a sponge and soak up everything that you need so you can be successful and you can help other people do the same thing. Now, I know we, we talked about, you know, skill set or not skill sets, but the work ethic and, you know, the difference between then and now. And now there's a defined line between being certified and having the right amount of skills to learn the world. Right. So I'm pretty sure the burning question of a lot of people will be out there. What certifications do you think are relevant today and that would help a person transition into the cloud and learn the world? I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you my interesting view, right? Because I think one of the biggest challenges and this is always just a challenge for me personally I have to work with, is when you look at the current landscape today, whether it's Azure, Google, or AWS, you're never going to learn 
all of those services, right? From like from a master standpoint, because there's too many. Right. right? It is. So where do you start and, and what do you focus on and what do you master? So kind of the approach and the kind of the approach is more saying, okay, what it, what is the specific, you know, um, I, I, I'm losing the word, but kind of stack. Am I going for machine learning? Am I going for mm-hmm. DevOps? Am I going for software development? And, you know, the cool thing is, is a lot of these technologies like AI and machine learning, they, they interface across all of those things from, you know, being an architect, from being yeah. a DevOps engineer, security engineer. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to write the algorithms thanks to all of those services today. So because of the impact that AI and machine learning is having, it actually creates the problem of where do, what do I do, right? Yeah. And so what, what I would say is the starting point you know, if, if you say, hey, I'm going to do it based off of what I think a security engineer is going to make in salary, I don't think it matters because at the end of the day, the best DevOps engineer will make more than the median security engineer, right? Mm-hmm. If you master at a deep level what you do inside and out, you get the experience and you know why things don't work and you can troubleshoot things in an issue and build it out, you will be invaluable if you approach it this way, right? So. You know, I, I, I look at it from honestly, starting with the, like the architecture and development, okay? Cause right. you're not going to avoid development in anything you do. The level of development is one thing, right? Scripting is development. Automation is development. It's not necessarily you build an app. So I think starting in those two points uh, is probably the best way to go. And, and that goes across all the cloud stuff. Yes. Yeah. All the providers just have the exact same certifications. Just start somewhere. <laughs> Right. And I don't think you need to have multi cloud. Right. If you're a senior, awesome. You don't need multi cloud to get your job and, and to start getting in your foot in the door. You just need to master something from somewhere, the specific set of stuff. Right. Yep. So I think, you know, so I think, you know, looking at somebody's coming into the industry, they can literally use those certifications like AWS Solutions Architect or even developer to build a fundamental. Um, knowledge base and use uh, some other tools and um, services, even third party or cloud agnostic tools to build upon those as well. Right. So literally you guys can look at what roles are that are available that in, in, in a role that you want, whether it's DevOps or cost security or whatever, and look at what these companies are using. You know what I'm saying? Cre- and create a commonizing uh, pattern of what you see you know, they asking for scripting or whatever the case may be, but make sure you have that basic um, foundation of cloud knowledge, because I see a lot, especially today where you have, once again, companies who are adopting cloud and they don't even have staff that know cloud. And I've heard stories of companies having to hire or contract other companies to come in and interview people for cloud positions because they have no one that understands cloud to interview those candidates, right? So do yourself a favor and and really go through those certifications and and learn it, right? Don't power through it just because you you wanna have that tangible item on your LinkedIn profile. Make sure you understand, you know, uh, the, the intimate details of what services and how AWS architects, now how they design the, the, the well architected framework, the best practices, you know, developing, looking at the certification and look at what tools are AWS um, using, you know, that you can use AWS right now as far as specific services that can help you develop. And then look at other tools as well, languages and third party tools that you can use that companies are asking you to have those skill sets with, you know, and, and I know you talked about AI machine learning, you know, and um, how it really touches almost every aspect of tech, whether security, development, um, DevOps, architecting, networking, all of that good stuff, right? So we want to talk about what you think is the next big thing. Like what trends do you see going on in tech today that those in cloud roles or even those once they land a cloud role should be focusing on to take their career to the next level? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, somebody asked me that on Twitter, shameless plug, at Anthony D. James. <laughs> and here's kind of how I responded. I was, I was at a leadership talk, and um, I want to give him credit. Uh, the, only thing I, the only thing I can do is say he's the author of something called The Idea Book. And, and he said something which, and this was a few years ago, 
I observed over and over and over and over and over and over again, right? An idea is two things that already exist combined together to make something new, right? Mm -hmm. Now, let's look at the major trend, okay? And we're, when everybody always says that the next, the next big thing, they're, they're missing out on the fact that there's so much new combination together that needs to be made still. Mm. Using some of the latest trends, right? And so let, let's talk about that. What is that? And if you if you look at AWS, a lot of their services, all of their new services are taking existing services and putting a front end on it, making mm. something new, right? So what is that? What is disruptive? If you look at the number of companies that haven't even made the digital transformation to the cloud or made digital transformation in general, the market opportunity is huge, okay? It, it's just three things, cloud computing, machine learning slash AI kind of, you know, however you're going to look at that and blockchain, right? I, I think those three things from a philosophical standpoint, from an innovation standpoint, from a new idea standpoint is going to continue. What's that fourth factor that you pull in? How do you apply that to a niche industry, to manufacturing, some little small component of manufacturing, right? So there's just so much opportunity with those three things. Now, I took some machine learning courses last year and uh, I won't lie. Yeah, I, I struggled a little, little bit with it. Right? <laughs> and the good news is, is you don't have to be an algorithmic programmer to what you need to know is the current existing services, how training works, how to use existing models, how to automate it, right? Mm -hmm. The opportunities for 150, $200,000 a year jobs in right. five years are huge, right? And AI. The topic is, hey, it's going to automate the jobs, right? It's not going to automate the engineers. And the reason I say that is what it will do is it will create a new baseline, right? The things that we have to do today, we won't have to worry about doing tomorrow because AI and machine learning will do it for us. Mm -hmm. What that means is, is we can now think about next level. Okay, right now, Elon Musk is trying to figure out how to get to Mars. Well, in 10 years, space travel to Mars, hopefully, is going to be like, we already know how to do that. We, we don't have to think about it, right? There's a procedure. We have it done. We've proven it. Now we get to think about what's next, mm. right? And that's the same thing with AI is that baseline frees up for what's next. And if you, if you look at those technologies and the adoption of these technologies, they're, they're 10 to 20-year trends. You know, moving from virtualization to cloud computing was pretty fast. AI, machine learning, blockchain, those are fundamental, fundamental changes in industries that don't have enough people to drive that change in all of the industries that exist, right? Mm -hmm. So there's just, I, I just think cloud computing, the AI, blockchain, I just think there's so much opportunity for founders of new companies, uh, as well as just careers over the next 10, 20 years. No, I mean, I think you really hit on the head because I look at, you know, when I look at machine learning and artificial intelligence, I look at companies like like Capital One, right, how they innovate and they know more about their customer than the customer knows about themselves as far as spending habits, where they shop, how they shop, you know, products to put them in place to make it easier for them to shop. And this is, you know, that's how I look at it, right, where um it's a lot of talent and a lot of demand for that type of talent. You know, I think that's where the industry is going, period. Um, and you hit it right on the head. So if you guys are in cloud right now, or you're thinking about it, this is something that you should have on your plate to start learning right now. Literally just, you know, you don't have to be an expert, but you can literally just bite off a few chunks of this pie over a period of time and get the basic understanding and start building up upon that fundamental and that foundation. Um, no, go ahead. Sorry. I know you said no, something. No, I was going to say, it's, it's literally simple. I, I was looking at uh, something like AWS anomaly detection. All, all that is, is a service that ha that hits a machine learning service that does all the work for you, right? As, as a developer, system administrator, and the good news is with AI, blockchain, all this stuff, it's that it actually has a huge demand increase for system administrators on top of it too, right? Serverless can't serve all of these things. Mm. Um, so the, the kicker is, is knowing, identifying, learning how to say to an organization, hey, all we need to do is plug this in because I'm aware of it. I know what it does. I know the benefits of it. And I know how to implement it in our architecture. You 
have done and officially implemented some AI, right? Same thing with Amazon Comprehend. Let's plug it in. Or the new manufacturing AI services. You don't have to know how to build the algorithms. You just have to know how to say, this will solve this problem for a really low cost. And all we got to do is use some APIs and dump in some data. So what Anthony just gave you guys the gems, right? To, you can literally learn by understanding what. So let me rewind this. One thing I think is important for you guys to do, and I always say this, is read. Like read articles of where the tr industry is going. Where, what's trending in the industry? How companies are trying to solve problems right now? Read one major article a day, and you will literally increase your knowledge base to understand not only where the industry is going, but how you can position yourself to be a power player. And with that, you will start to learn what you can do. Like he just said, you don't have to learn an algorithm. As long as you understand what problems you can solve and the solutions to grab as far as the services you can use in that cloud service provider, in most cases, that's all you need. You can learn it as you go, you know, um, get into that mind frame, get into that thought process. So um, now with a note on something, is that yeah, right? yeah, yeah, go ahead, man. I got I want to add a note on hiring, if that's OK, because having hired tons of people and still and still in some of the interview process now today, I, I, I do want to touch on two things on hiring. Number one, read that industry, understand the company that you're applying for, or you have a phone interview for, what is their industry? Right. What is their opportunities? What is their market opportunities, right? Learn everything you can about it to say, hey, are you guys using machine learning to solve X? You know, asking the right questions in an interview shows them you know how to think. Even if they're already doing it, you're thinking how they think is what they see, right? They want to know that you're thinking how we think. So that's from a technical aspect, one way to do it. The other thing in the interviews, and this is, I, I just can't emphasize this enough because one of the things I help CEOs with and companies with is kind of putting in a process like this. Companies build a culture, okay? Culture, we care about customers. Amazon has, every, every company has core values. Amazon has a popular set of core values, right? Linux can have them, the cloud guru has them, they all have them. And the thing is, is the way that they design their cultures is they, they have behavioral interview questions that help determine if you exhibit those cultural values, mm. right? And a lot of strong, good culture companies, their cultures are so strong. And these are the companies you want to work at, by the way. They're so strong that if you go into the company and you don't fit in culturally, like a value, like genuinely caring about others, if it's a mm. core value of theirs, you, it rejects it almost like an organ. It's going to be uncomfortable for you. You're not going to want to work there. So understand what those core values are and just learn. Like you can teach yourself anything, right? Teach yourself how to adapt and think about those core values as well as teach yourself how things that you've done throughout your life exhibit those core values because they'll, they will ask you questions on that, right? It's just one of the things they will do. So just as critical as a technical interview of understanding What's important to this company? Because values and culture is what teaches people in a company to think so they can be autonomous, right? Without needing managers to tell them what to do. Those are the companies you want to work at. So I think you guys don't, if you don't know, he just dropped some gems on you, you know, literally on, and you were literally going into my next question I was going to ask you as well, right? Where you're looking at people asking how can I get my foot in the door or how can I show experience if no one will hire me to gain experience, right? And speaking of interviews and speaking of people that you've interviewed personally and hired, and even if you were looking for uh, new uh, candidates now for any anything you were doing, what are some of the things that you look for in, in the candidates and if they are developing talent? And what things did you look for that would, that would literally show you uh, how they would be successful down the road and become an asset to a company um, and what you're doing in the future. Yeah, I think one of the greatest, we'll move culture aside, right? And I think one of the greatest skill sets, not from a technical skill set that I look for is what do you do? And I'm, you're not going to ask this question, right? Because you're giving them the answer by asking the question directly. They're going to ask the question indirectly. And what people are going to look for is what do you do to continue learning 
and making sure that you know about all of these things that could help our company from a technical standpoint, mm -hmm. right? So they, they want to know that you are taking time, that you have a hunger for learning and growing, right? Specifically as a junior, if we're going to place a junior in an organization, that's because we know this person fits in culturally. We know they fit in from a thought process standpoint of, I want to grow. I'm learning how to think. And that person can also grow within the organization, right? So take somebody new, if they're hungry, if they're self-starters, then generally that's going to continue in other parts of their career mm -hmm. and they'll continue growing within an organization. So, you know, self-starters from certifications, taking initiative, working in a level up program, right? Sticking through and doing that, people are going to look for commitment. That, that's at the end of the day, that's just what they're going to look for. How do, you, how do you go and create an accountability program to ensure that you will grow? Okay, well, I see somebody going through a level up program, right? They took the initiative on their own, mm -hmm. they paid for it, they took the risk, they knew they had to put in the work and effort, then it comes in with an awesome testimonial because they put in the work and effort, then they have work to show for it. This person is somebody who's gonna be able to continue growing into the mid-level senior person we need. It's easier to keep an employee than it is to acquire an employee. So as a junior person, how do you exhibit continued growth? Not because your company tells you to grow or assigns you training. They, they will make it available. But at the end of the day, what are you doing to do those things? Right. And your program is an ex exact thing of that. A cloud group is an exact example of that. People going and doing these things on their own, not necessarily because their company mandated it. Now, companies mandate stuff to mid-level and senior engineers all the time, but when it comes to getting that job, you have to show that you're hungry. Yeah. Not wait for somebody to tell you to be hungry. No, like <laughs> hungry and hustle, two of the most uncommon. Like it's it's not as common today as it as it used to be, but it's literally the single biggest thing in the tech industry when it comes to recruiting stuff. In my personal opinion. No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, man. And you know what? <laughs> Just even share uh, the story of how, you know, because Tom uh, was my boss. Tom Hazel was my boss at Linux Academy who hired me, right? So when I came in for the position, um, I came in for a position that I was kind of unqualified for, but I did a great job in showing a hustle and hunger, hunger as far as my passion of learning and even taking my journey. So for the folks who are learning and doing, um, trying to transition, take your journey now and share your journey. Like, don't be shy. Some people tell me, oh, no, nah, man, I haven't used LinkedIn in 10 years. Okay. It's probably going to be very important that, uh, a very important piece to you landing your role. Right. So with me, Tom told me, he was like, look, man, I like your hustle. I like your hunger. I like your passion. We just created a position like two days ago. And I think you're right for it. Here's the position, you know, here's the, the, the budget and everything. The opportunity was right there. I was like, man, I don't care what you need me to do, man. I'm hungry. Let me in. I'm, I'm so grateful for it. And it's changed my life ever since. So being passionate to drive yourself uh, and create a habit of working hard. So you're coming into Level up in tech, you're working hard for five months. That's creating a habit that you can keep on continuously learning. And it's going to put you in uh, ahead of folks who are relaxed in their position, right? Or someone who's been there for a couple of years coming in. They don't want to learn anything new. They're coasting. Here you come hungry, ready to learn, showing that you can provide solutions. You're going to be recognized more or, you know, faster or quicker than that person who's been there. And then they're going to wonder why, like, what, what, you know, he just can't, he just got here or she just got here. How, how are you going to her over? Because if you show that passion and hunger and continuously work hard to learn something new, these things are just going to start falling in your lap and opportunities to prove yourself are going to start coming to you. But don't let those opportunities scare you. Just like, <laughs> just like the opportunity with uh, Linux Academy almost scared me because to tell you the truth, and I've never told anyone this, I told my wife, and she's on the call now, I literally told her when Tom gave me the demo to do in the interview, I literally told her, look, I'm going to tell Tom that I appreciate the opportunity, but I don't think it's right for me because I was scared crapless 
of doing this demo and showing what I can do for Linux Academy. But she looked at me and said, man, if you don't get your butt in there and do this demo and show them what you got, I'm going to strangle you. And I showed them, and you guys know where the story, how the story goes. But you're going to have opportunities that your continuous learning is going to bring to you that you may feel that it's a little bit out of your league. Take them anyway and, and learn. Learn more about it. Ask the questions that you need. Um, and I want to take this time too. If anyone has questions for for Anthony, J. matter of fact, first, if this has been valuable, put AJ's in the chat. I want to see some AJ's in the chat. If you you got value from this information he's putting out, I'm gonna, give me the AJ's. Come on now, give me the AJ's. There we go. I see Tom. I see Chris. I see Tamara. Yup, AJ. Yeah. So. I want to take this time too. If anyone have any questions for Anthony to ask a career related questions, um, right now we, you know, we want to stick to questions about your career, questions where you think the industry is going, um, to, to get the content and value for you so you can move forward. So we're going to allow a couple minutes for questions. If anyone has any, let's see what we got down in the chat here. So real quick, um, one thing I wanted to add about hungry people, right? Is hungry people don't let obstacles or failure stop them. Right. right? That's, yep. that's literally, those are the two greatest learning opportunities to become next level than anything else. And man, it's been such a joy. Like when, when we uh, chatted to talk about this, hearing about your program and then also hearing about like kind of what it does, it bridges this gap and a gap that I think is just so critical. And the reason I think it's critical is because one of the single hardest things is to create a new habit, right. do something that's hard. Purpose will drive you, but an accountability partner goes a long way. You were, you were super blessed. It sounds like your, your wife, right? Like go, you know, super <laughs> supportive. Yeah. Right? And I mean, that, that's as critical as, as anything, you know, a similar story, but like that, that program kind of how it works and you, you see other people and you encounter challenges, but you're helped along the way. It, it's it's just really cool to see that um, because, you know, the qualities that you build are those types of qualities that you're interviewing for in something like that. You took initiative, you right. took a risk, you pushed oh. through it, you committed to it, right? And you did something that was hard that took extra effort, right? Nobody allocated that time to you. You made a personal sacrifice to do it. That shows hunger. That shows passion, right? That type of commitment shows a lot. I think that's really cool. Yeah. So because you have to create that sacrifice, like before I even started. Right. Um, and I'm pretty sure everyone here, you have to, if you have a significant other or you have children or anything, you have to make, let them understand that, you know, you're going to be sacrificing some time away because this is something that you want to do to benefit everyone. Like Tamara knew all I needed was an opportunity and it would literally just create success because she seen me work for it. So when I had that moment of imposter syndrome, because that's what we're going to call it, she was like, nah, mm -mm. you did all this work to tell this man that you scared to even do this demo. So that's when, you know, I was like, yeah, you're right. You know, um, I'm going to do it. And I went in there and you guys know the story. So, Let's see if we got any questions here. Imagine if you wouldn't have done it. Like, right. would you be having this conversation? No. If you wouldn't. If you let that fear yeah. rip you, what would you be doing right now? Yeah. You know? So it, it's, it's, it's uh, one of those things where I, I think about every day, right? Like, there's nothing wrong with banking. There's nothing wrong with being in the banking industry as a banker or a manager or anything. But I could just imagine myself every time I go, because I still bank with that bank. Every time I go by, I just like, man, I can't see myself doing this. Like it was just, and I didn't even know how I was going to get into the tech industry. And everybody kept saying Anthony James, Linux Academy. And I was like, I don't know. It's too good to be true. Let me do some research. And lo and behold, I start learning. And it's funny how things line up at the company that I used to train myself ended up giving me the opportunity to change my life, man. So I'm so forever grateful to you and Tom because Tom took a chance on me and I, I don't think I'll be here talking to you today if Tom, Tom didn't take that chance as well. Um, now we do have a question from a guest in our program, Quentin um, Harrell. Uh, he said, I'm a new level up the tech student. 
you're a new level up in tech guest. We won't call you students. We won't call you anything but guests because we want to treat you as so. So um, what periodicals or source of daily industry articles do you prefer? That's, that's, a, that's a great question. So I'll relate it to tech. Um, and I, and I, I, don't follow, I don't keep up with Azure or Google, right? But AWS, if you just subscribe to essentially all of their blog posts and they're also press releases, they do all of these case studies, right? Mm -hmm. Around how X, X company is doing Y to solve B or what, that algorithm was not there, but you know what I mean? Um, and so that, it, it just keeps me up to date and thinking about things differently. And then I'm a huge fan of following financial news because the financial news uh, really addresses economics of different industries, how things mm -hmm. are being applied. Uh, and so looking at it from that standpoint, um, is something that I, I generally like to do because it shows how certain companies are using specific technologies. You know, an acquisition, a company going and acquiring a specific um, technology, right? Technology company, specifically if they acquire one, says something huge, right? And so you'll see some of these older industries that haven't made the digital transformation that will literally go in and acquire a, a company that solves a major problem within their industry and it gives them this competitive advantage. So it, it just it kind of this well-rounded, it's not, um, it's not how-to articles all the time. It's more what's out there and why is that a strategic advantage, right? Why, mm -hmm. why is that a thing? Um, you know, I'm a huge fan from a leadership standpoint um, or management standpoint of HBR, right? Uh, uh, Harvard Business Review. Um, but that's, that's, uh, that's not on the, the technical side at all. Well, appreciate that, man. I, I, I think definitely reading the articles is going to be uh, next level for a lot of people because not only it gives you the understanding of where the industry is going and what you can do, but it creates that deeper level of conversation once you're in the interviewing room or the interviewing chair that uh, a lot of companies or a lot of hiring managers are not expecting you to know about their company, like you said earlier, or about the industry. So, yeah, Q, um, take those gems down, Quentin. Just lay them out for you, brother. Well, take um, another another big one is the Gartner reports. Gartner reports are relatively big. But, um, you know, for blockchain, there's a lot of financial institutions that are releasing reports, right, around how blockchain is going to impact certain industries. Mm. They're doing the industry research before these companies are actually, you know, before the mainstream companies are jumping in on it. So, following those types of things will be really huge to kind of see those opportunities and the potential of a specific technology. When you read those articles, as you said, it teaches you how to think, how to think about how these technologies actually work, right? It's the lifeblood of companies for the future. Yes, man, you drop some gems, man. I'm going to check out that. It's the Gardner report. Yeah. The Gartner does a lot of different reports, okay. around like cloud providers, things like this. Some of it's paywall, big extreme paywall. Uh, because companies hire Gartner for an analysis, but they do a lot of public reports. And then um, the financial news, you know, there was just one on blockchain that came out from, uh, I think it was JP Morgan, right? And I found that through CNBC, where, you know, which is huge because it talks about um, the impact, the innovation impact of blockchain and in future industries. So Those where the ideas are coming from. Mm. That's dope, man. That is dope. So you put me on to something. So I'm, I'm definitely going to check it out. Um, so I see we have no other questions that's in the comments. Uh, let me make sure. Yep, Quinn says super dope. Cool. So I want to take this time for anybody who's on the call that's looking to transition into to, to tech and learn a skill and understand what it takes to right now focus on cloud engineering and DevOps engineering. Check out levelofatech.com. I'll put a call to action up top. Click that link. We do have some seats available for April. And we're filling up seats for May cohort as well. Um, so even if you have questions, feel free to reach out to me or Anthony. Um, do you mind if they reach out to you with questions about the career, Anthony? No, that's totally fine. Okay. I, I love yeah. that. Yeah. So, yeah, reach out to Anthony on uh, LinkedIn. Let me see if I can grab a link real quick. Are you on LinkedIn? You still on LinkedIn? LinkedIn? And Twitter. And both of those are just Anthony D for David James. And so LinkedIn okay. slash N slash Anthony D. James and then Twitter, Anthony D. James. Let me, let me see. Let me grab a, uh, I'm going to grab a link for them real quick. I'm going to put it in to the chat. There we go. There we go. Yep. 
this is Mourinho. Oh, who got it? Oh, okay. So, uh, Sri, Sri Ram, I, I hopefully uh, said your name correct. So thank you for that. Um, but I appreciate you so much, brother, that you, you grace us with some time to come in and answer some questions and talk more about your journey. Um, we all appreciate you, man. Is there anything that you, you want to leave the people with any advice or last uh, last piece of content you want to say or the last piece of value? Well, here's what I want to leave. I want to thank you. Because honestly, it was you and people like you at Linux Academy that allowed us to change the lives that we were able to change. And then what's happening is you're going on and continuing to figure out new ways to do that, right? And honestly, if there's anything more, there's, I don't think there's much more humbling than seeing a lot of that continue on, right? And seeing that in others and the passion behind it. Um, and so I just... You know, thank you for applying. Thank you for taking that chance, you know, taking that fear because uh, it just that type of um, it's super humbling for me. And and uh, so so thanks. And of course, that's an example of hustle and going past fear. Right. So yeah. give you the advice. Yeah. So I appreciate that, man. That's that's you know, it's, this is nothing more than what I want to do. It's just when I got into the industry, people started asking me how I did it. And I was like, what if you know, I can help people. You know, drive them to Linux Academy, show them what to do. And then, also, you know, like, what if we could put together something where we're literally just changing the lives just like you was doing, right? Um, and I'll see uh, Louis, Louise, or Louis asks, I've been working as a system admin for the last four years. How can I move to DevOps? Um, listen, click the link up top. You know, um, come to the website, fill out the contact form. I'm more than happy to have a conversation with you and talk about what we can do to help you uh, get into a DevOps role. Um, you have four years of technical experience as a system admin. So, you know, it's some things that you could definitely do to put yourself in position. So, um, but once again, man, I appreciate you. And thank you so much. Anthony James, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much, man. And uh, Thanks for having me. Hey, if all you guys continue to level up in tech, my name is Broadus, and this is Anthony James, and we out.